Hi folks, I'm Bob Schultz, physical therapist. Brad Heineck, physical therapist. Because we are the most famous physical therapists on the internet. In our opinion, of course, Bob. This is the single best stretch, in our opinion, for carpal tunnel syndrome. And plus, we're going to give you five other helpful tips beyond the stretch. A lot of them are preventative, too. Things that can prevent you from getting it, as well as help manage it if you are in an episode of that syndrome. Brad and I were just saying, we don't see a ton of people with carpal tunnel syndrome, but I, I've seen enough. And... Th these steps have helped. Uh, I wouldn't say it, hel it has helped any, all of them by any means. I mean, it's, it's a, a percentage, but, right. but and there's uh, a number it's certainly worth a try. Right. They don't cost anything. Well, some of them don't. The, the stretch in particular, you just need a wall. That's right. Right. And your arm. You got to have your arm, Bob. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> okay. <laughs> if you are new to our channel, by the way, please take a second to subscribe to us. We provide videos how to stay healthy, fit, pain-free. We upload every day. Also, go over to the Facebooks and like us because Brad and I, all this week, once again, we are providing you with positive vibes if you give us the likes. Vibes, so, yes. Bob and Brad. Strong like bull. All right, carpal tunnel syndrome, Brad. Okay. Uh, generally, what you're talking about here is an impingement of the, the median nerve. And the median nerve comes off of T, well, let's see, let me get that right, C5 to T1. So, so we're talking the low neck, yeah. upper back This there. is, by the way, Sam, the super skeleton. He's from 3B. Uh, they were kind enough to send us one of these, so uh, we really appreciate it. Right, Sam? Yes. Yeah, he's working out pretty good. We have had to discipline him a little bit, but so <laughs> far, we're, he's getting an A+. Plus. Yeah. He's well, doing, maybe A-. minus. He's doing well. So anyway, if we're talking about, uh, you know, the, the first seven bones make up the, the neck, and then uh, T1 and T2 that's the, the kind of get into the mid back. Right, and you're just below that, that bump, that big bump on the bottom of your neck there. That's uh, the C7 there. So we're all right in the area. So, so all these little yellow nerve roots come together and they form the median nerve. Yeah, let's, which, get, let's get Gumby out of there. Yeah. He, he's kind of getting in so the Brad's way. So Brad's done a nice job of kind of representing the, the median nerve here. It comes down underneath the collarbone, goes up into the armpit a little bit. Then it goes in, uh, between the bicep and the brachialis, and then it comes down and it goes into the hand. And look at this, fits right into that carpal tunnel, which is the carpi bundles, and there's a tunnel. Uh, there's a basically, it's not really a tunnel; it's an open tunnel. And you can see as you flex the wrist or extend the wrist how it fits right in there, and that can be the primary cause of carpal tunnel syndrome. Because there's a ligament that goes across too, so right. that it really then it, is, it, it, it makes the closed tunnel. There, yeah, yeah, because we want to have a tunnel that's not open. Right. Um, and we bring all this other information up because there are times when carpal tunnel syndrome can be actually caused from a problem up here, and it's misdiagnosed. Yeah, they call it double crush syndrome. So a lot of times the theory is that the ner the nerves getting impinged upon up here or pinched up here. Right. And so it's hypersensitive. So by the time it gets down here, it, it the, the uh, another crush here. Mm -hmm. So you got a crush here and a crush here, and that ca starts causing the symptoms. Right. So we, as therapists, tend to treat up here and down here. And this also kind of shows how you, this first exercise that we're going to do with the main exercise, how it kind of glides the nerve. Right. You know, as it as it moves along, up, you know, on its trail here. Right. The, this nerve has to slide up and down and have a a movement in there and if it gets pinched or trapped or crushed as the term says that can cause that pain numbness tingling all those symptoms that and are usually what is it brad it's the the thumb mm -hmm. for first finger second finger and usually half of the third finger yeah you're going to have numbness and tingling right. into these areas here quite often this thinner eminence that this pad right that by your pad thumb. right there if you compare it to the other side if you only have it on one hand it actually might be a little what we call atrophied or smaller because it's gotten weaker because the muscle's been, uh, you know, it's not getting the nerve conduction like it should. There you go. If, if it's oh. that far, you've had it for quite a while. Yeah, you've that, had it for a while, serious. right. Now, the, the middle finger, you said half the fingers, are it the top half or the bottom half? Yeah. Right down the middle, Brad. Right, yeah, that, it's the longitudinal half, so it's right. this way. It's really, it's really neat how that, you'll see, it's Good half point. is numb and half is not numb. Okay. Well, it's neat to me. I don't know what other people Well, think. let's get this out of the way. Sam, yeah. sorry you did your job for the day. We really yeah. are loaded for bear on this. We got Sam, we yeah. got a computer, we got a wall, wrist splints. So let's get into the single best stretch. It's kind of a progression. Um, you, you know, it's, it's, there's steps to it. So the first step is that you're actually, and it's called nerve flossing. It's the nerve flossing of the median nerve. You're going to put your hand straight, your arm straight across like this. And with your head straight up and down, you're just going to start working on 
extending the wrist like this and gently. I don't want you going to the point where you're firing that nerve up and making it worse. You might you'll, want to you'll feel it. Yeah, you want to bump up against the pain. And quite often, I've seen, Brad, is if you compare both sides, mm -hmm. again, if you have it on one side, this side is tighter without okay. a doubt. I mean, so it's just not words, bending it. You won't be able to extend your hand down as far. Right. And that's so how you know. Arm straight across 10 times, just twice a day. That's all we're going to start with, Brad. Okay. All right. The next progression is that you're actually going to make it a little more difficult by actually tipping the head this way. So you can see how I'm putting a little more stretch on the nerve roots here, Brad? Yeah, remember that that nerve we showed with Sam starts here, and if you bring the head that way, it pulls the nerve this direction, puts a little more tension on it, and then we put some tension on this yeah. way, so we're stretching it from both ends. So, it's like a double whammy. So yeah, let's say you've been doing this for, for a couple weeks, and you got kind of pretty full range. You don't feel any pain at all with mm -hmm. it. You're going to go to the phase two, where you're going to put the head over like this and, th and now start doing the same thing. Sure. And now you might start feeling pain again. Sure. So that's the next progression. Next progression after that, Brad, you actually can put the arm back a little bit further. Oh, so here. Yeah. Right. Good, good way to show it, Brad. Yeah. So if you go back a little further, same thing, tip the head and start moving the hand again. Two times a day, 10 times. That's all you're going to do. And get, you know, you're putting a little stress on that nerve to, you know, Get floss it, basically. Right, get it broken loose. So this is kind of a patient thing. You're just not going to get it in one day, typically. And then the final one, if those are, again, that's going fine. There's no pain now. It's really progressed well. You're going to find a wall, which, uh, just for filming purposes, Brad's going to be the wall here. Well, and you're going to put the hand up against the wall like this and get it all the way flat as much as you can. And now you're going to just move the head away from the wall. Just like this, and now you're kind of really getting a maximal stretch on that nerve and maximal floss on that nerve. All right. Boy, we took a long time to do that, Brad. We better yeah. get into our tips now. Yeah. Uh, we got five tips. Uh, one is the one we've talked about many times is that you want to just sit down, Brad? Yes, I do. For so many people, they're actually, the, their, their computer screen is too high or too low, and so what happens, their head goes down like this. We want to raise your screen up. Because that, again, opens things up here, mm -hmm. allows plenty of room for the nerves to go through. Oh, where, where's the, right here? There you go. Bring it up, Bob. Keep going. There you go. So, but now the problem is where are your hands? Yeah. And we want your hands to be like this. Yeah. We want this to be vertical, and we want the keyboard to be down with your wrist straight. Right. You don't want to have your wrist bent like this all day long or like this all day long. Mm -hmm. So we use, like, often as a lap tray here. Not a lap dance, Brad. Don't get excited. Bob, it's a family <laughs> I show. I know. Okay, so here we go. This is black on black, so it might be kind of hard to see, but we got this nice tray that goes on your lap. The, the keyboard fits on top. It's nice to get a wireless keyboard in this situation, right. uh, and they're very common And you nowadays. can have the mouse down there along yep, with that. Precisely. So there. sometimes people just put the keyboard on the lap without a lap. Uh, tray right and, and just mm -hmm. go ahead mm -hmm. it's better to even have your wrist maybe even slightly down a little sure. bit as opposed to having it extended i wish i could type better that'd be my next best thing okay let's move this out of the way that's true brad i well, wish because i could that'd type be better. faster and you wouldn't spend so much well time i there. type so bad i have to look down half the time so now yeah. i'm <laughs> kind of um you want to make sure you got correct sleeping postures do not be sleeping on your stomach you sleep on your stomach your head's turned all the way one way or the other you got, a lot of times you got your arms overhead like this. It's putting pressure on those nerves. Yeah. Um, if you sleep on your side, you, you really don't want to sleep on the side you're having carpal tunnel syndrome on. Mm -hmm. It's going to put a lot of pressure on it. Um, if you do feel like you just have to, um, ideally a lot of times what we do is we have two pillows here. I get all, yeah, you got that other one right there, Brad. In, incoming. Ooh. So we got a pillow here. We're going to create a canal here. And this takes some stress off that arm where the nerve is coming through. Right. And so it takes a little bit of stress uh, off the carpal tunnel even, uh, basically, because you're taking stress off the nerve. Yep, yeah, allows more circulation. It just frees up that area, unlocks it. And finally, if you sleep on your back, don't be sleeping with two pillows and bringing your head way forward again, uh, putting pressure on the nerves. Uh. Have a thin pillow so that your ears are kind of lined up with your shoulder. Good posture, even when you're, when you're sleeping. All right, next one, Brad. Uh, you might try a wrist splint, and that's what Brad's putting on right now. Um, there's a whole bunch of them. Uh, we've got some on our website. 
that we listed that, that work out pretty well. All right, and um, you actually want to sleep with it because a lot of times when you sleep, you may, your wrist may end up in an extended or flexed position for a long period of time, and that can really irritate the nerve. So the splint is to keep your wrist in neutral position all There's night. a lot of people that do this type of thing when they sleep sure, at night, Brad. Right. And, and so we're trying to keep you in neutral, and a lot of times this really helps a lot of people. I mean, right. um, one thing I want to point out is a lot of them have staves in it, and those staves, you can actually shape them. So you can make them a little more comfortable on your wrist. You can actually just bend them and, and, and form them. Right, so it custom so, fits your wrist. Right. So that makes it more comfortable. A lot of times people don't know that. They, yeah, they get these and they don't right. realize it's like it doesn't fit very well. Well, you can you can bend it. And usually, like on this one, you, you can actually, if you don't like it, just pull the stave out. And but I wouldn't sure. throw it away. You know, hang on to it, put it in your in your drawer. Uh, again, because of the double crunch syndrome, a lot of times uh, you you might be getting some stress on the nerve up in here. So we do have people doing neck extensions. Mm -hmm. so we have them stretch back as far as they can, opening up this area, giving plenty of room for the nerve. Sure. The nerve, the median nerve to find its way down that path and not get pressure on it. So, and these are something you can do, oh, well, you can do them every hour if you want. You can do a good 10 just to stretch it out. Again, all these things work out better if you're working at it constantly rather than trying to do one time a day. Sure, right. So, and the final thing is you may want to try just doing a little massage on the forearm. That nerve is coming through there. These muscles can be tight. Um, you might want to use the pier wave. I mean, um, well, yeah, if you've yeah. got one, you definitely want to use it, yeah, but, but you're it, not going to go up by the wrist. No, that's going to irritate. You want to get back here where the muscle belly is. Here, should I give a little demonstration, sure. here, Bob? And you know, I'm actually going to rest it here so I can relax those muscles on that and get into those muscles, get things relaxed. And of course, do it with good posture, Bob. Don't That's go ahead right. and That's like this. You'd be kind of defeating the purpose mm -hmm. there, wouldn't you? Yeah, this feels good, Bob. You can keep talking. All right. Well, I think we're done, Brad. So <laughs> we pretty much, that's pretty comprehensive uh, what we covered everything here today, yeah. I think. We're really proud of ourselves. Thanks a lot. <laughs>